Well, I'm still recovering this morning from a big bash two, day, uh, two days ago when I celebrated my 80th birthday. <laughs> And uh, a lot of uh, people asked me at that bash, as, because I'm 80, what was the most exciting year in the past 80 years? And I said, uh, next year. <laughs> because I think next year is when my dream of transforming business as usual and transforming poverty as well is likely to take place or make a big step forward. Three of the movements that I've been involved in over the past 30 years, I think, are at a crossroads. The first is the movement to end extreme poverty, which I think has basically failed. Unless we find new ways of addressing poverty, it will stay with us as it has for a long time. The second is the social impact movement. I think unless the social impact movement finds ways of demonstrating commercial profitability at scale, it risks dying quietly in its sleep, much like the appropriate technology movement did 25 years ago. And the third area is the area of big business. Big business has been in a global recession uh, and now is beginning to come out of it using the same overconsumption patterns that led to the recession in the first place and that are not sustainable for, uh, for the carrying capacity of the planet. So unless big business learns to earn attractive profits serving 2.7 billion underserved customers who live on less than $2 a day, I think it will, it risks going, following the route of Kodak. So I'm going to talk to you today about these three things very briefly and what I think is the real opportunity to transform all of these things in a positive way. There are 2.7 billion people in the world today who live on less than $2 a day. But in my view, conventional development aid has failed. Charity doesn't bring people out of poverty. Corporate social responsibility is for the most part cosmetic, there are exceptions. And impact investing confuses social mission and profit. I think conventional aid has failed for the obvious reasons, and you can read them on the slide for yourself. But now, here's the good news. There are 2.7 billion people, about 40% of all the customers in the world, who are underserved and that offer an unparalleled, unparalleled opportunity for creating new markets uh, that are profitable and create transformational social change. Many corporations have now started uh, creating new markets and new profit opportunities in emerging economies. I'll give, uh, I'd like to describe one example Cummins engine, 25 years ago, Cummins entered the China market right on the heels of Nixon's visit. They didn't make any money for 10 years. But let's look at the basic earnings pattern of Cummins in 2010. Their profit in Western markets, North America and Europe, was 5%. Their profit in China, India, and Brazil averaged 12%. The growth rate in Western markets was negative. 
the growth rate in China, India, and Brazil was 70%. So here is a huge opportunity, and there are many others uh, of the same kind. The question is, where can big business find the next China-like opportunity uh, following the kind of experience that a company like Cummins had? So what I'm going to just outline for you now is what I think is the transformational opportunity both for big business, for extreme poverty, and for impact investing. It's the 2.7 billion bypassed customers who live on less than $2 a day. But the first question is, why hasn't big business entered that market? I think there are three reasons. One, they don't think it can be profitable. Two, they don't have a clue how to design products and services that are radically affordable, that are needed uh, for this population. And three, there aren't models yet for last mile distribution. Most of the $2 a day customers are located in small villages all over the world. So what I'm devoting the rest of my life to is the creation of a new breed of frontier multinationals. Each of them will, is designed to transform the livelihoods of at least 100 million $2 a day customers, generate at least 10 billion in annual revenues, and earn sufficient profits to bring in commercial for-profit investments. I think all of these things are feasible. The first question is, if you're going to reach 100 million people at a time with a commercial business, I think it's reasonable to assume that you get maybe 10% market penetration. So you have to start addressing problems in which there are a billion customers. There are literally hundreds of these problems. There are more than a billion people who don't have access to safe drinking water. There's a billion people who don't have access to electricity. There's a billion people who don't have access to sanitation. There's a billion people who don't have access to affordable health or affordable education. Um, I'm going to talk about, so what I have been working on with my colleagues is creating the first four of these multinationals. And the four multinationals that are in various stages of development are first, a company uh, that sells safe drinking water to people in rural villages without it. Second, a company that is designed to cut the cost of photovoltaic electricity for villages by 80% and create a new sort of a general electric serving $2 a day customers. The third uh, brings, a, converts waste biomass into a torrified, the process called torrefaction, replacement for coal and charcoal. And the fourth is a system of branded schools at about $6 a month. I'm going to talk a little bit about one of these companies to give you an idea of what I'm, uh, what I'm referring to. Spring Health is a company in India that sells safe drinking water to $2 a day people in villages that have 300 to 1,000 households. The first question is, how do you address the problem of radical affordability? Well, there is a technology that creates chlorine by running a little bit of electricity through a 5% solution of salt. That creates chlorine oxidants. And we address the problem of last mile distribution by partnering with Karana shops. These are little mom and pop shops in villages all over the world. There are 10 million of them in India alone. We build a tank next to each shop. The shopkeeper fills it with contaminated water from his own shallow well. And our Indian staff come along on motorcycles and add a three-quarter liter of water purifier to the 3,000 liter tank. They test the water for safety uh, 45 minutes later. And if it's safe, 
the shopkeeper delivers the water to people's homes using rickshaws and motorized rickshaws. We sell that water for about eight cents a day for a jerry can delivered to people's homes. That model, the critical issue of that model is how to reach scale. So we have defined every step required to implement 50 villages every month. And that operating manual is about the same size as what a pilot takes into the cockpit for a commercial flight. Once we have all of that nailed down, uh, we will uh, rollout in multiples of 50 villages. That company is just started commercial rollout. We have uh, 110 staff, local staff. We are operating in 100 villages. By the end of this year, we should be in 400 villages. So there are models for making uh, this kind of a system work. Here is what we expect the outcome to be, both in terms of money and in terms of impact. We want to ultimately reach 100 million customers who are drinking water contaminated with fecal pathogens, and they are now, will now be drinking safe drinking water, which makes a big impact on health and income. Financially, we expect to have 5 million customers in 10,000 villages within three years, and 100 million customers in 10 years. Total capitalization for the initial commercial phase is less than three million. We should have free cash flow of two million in year four and five million in year five after paying back the initial capital. Of course, there are high risks, and in all of these companies, there are high risks and high rewards. So I want to say that um, there are many of these companies that can be formed, but we have to start looking at much bigger scale and much more effective profitability uh, in the future. Um, we're having a session to talk in more detail about this at 10.30 in C260, and we're having a book signing with a new book, uh, which is being launched today. Uh, at the back behind, the, in the impact space behind the uh, registration at 11.45. So in summary, I think all it takes is one person with a dream. I've already met many people like that here, and I think there are many people with a dream in the audience today. So I hope all of us can work together in achieving an end to poverty and new models for profitability at scale uh, by creating new forms of frontier global companies. Thank you very much.